I have never had a problem with my Native American identity, but I think other people have had a problem with my Native American identity. So I remember a time when I was a really young girl and um, there were things going on in community where I was living. I was a student at a public school and um, people in community were um, advocating for the protection of um, the right treaty rights to hunt, fish, and gather and um, there was a lot of racism and prejudice being expressed in schools, actually blatant hate, um, where people were um, calling me prairie n-words and telling me to go back to the res, and there was a lot of harassment in classrooms um, because of the community um, where I was living. There were a lot of sportsmen and fishermen um, who didn't agree um, with the right um, for Native people to hunt, fish, and gather. Um, in our territories. I got into a lot of fights at Paul's and stuff because people call me a white boy and I used to get really mad about that. But as I grew up and got older, you know, you just let things like that go. You know, I know who I am. People who know me know who I am and that's really all that matters. Every single child will, every native child will, any kid of color will face this identity. They're, it's beneficial. At first, when you first develop your identity, you become proud start hanging out and you start learning and wanting and desiring that. Where a lot of my students are right now, they're starting to develop that identity if they didn't already have it. I am uh, a citizen of the Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa out in North Dakota. Um, I was also raised at the Fond du Lac Reservation in northern Minnesota, and I have lived um, in the Twin Cities for about 10 years. Um, and I introduce myself as being from all of those places um, because of the family and friends and relationships that I have in those spaces. Um, really, I think, um, tell people something about me. It's both rural, reservation, and urban. Um, I'm from Leech Lake. I'm enrolled in Leech Lake. I grew up in Minneapolis. I am Chicago, Lakota, in Leech Lake, Ojibwe. So, Rosebud Sioux Tribe. Born and raised in Minneapolis. I'm from Pine Ridge. Um, I said my mother, she's enrolled in uh, White Earth. Three things in this world exist in the regards of blood quantum, dogs, horses, and Indians. Those are the three things in this world you need to have a piece of paper for, like I have my tribal ID, to be considered. If you're going to be a purebred, thoroughbred horse that goes and wins the Kentucky Derby, you have the papers approved that you are. If you're going to be a purebred, beautiful, 8K seed with kennel lab, you're going to have a blood trail and paper trail. If you're going to be a Native American, you're going to have a blood trail and a paper trail. Well, I think that that's a big question. Um, I think when you look at the history of blood quantum, I don't necessarily support it because I think it has a lot to do with the genocide. Um, really, I think it's probably going to be the end of Indian people. It's like, to me, it's kind of like the new genocide because I think the problem with blood quantum is, for instance, my daughter is in um, a quarter Ho-Chunk and a quarter Leech Lake. She, that, she has to choose one of those to enroll in and her other blood quantum doesn't come with her. So she's only a quarter enrolled in either one. So I think, you know, that right there, she's losing a quarter of her Indianness. 
And I think eventually that's what's going to lead to natives disappearing. I don't think that it's right that Native Americans are defined by, by blood quantum. No. I mean, in terms of my enrollment card, my blood quantum is listed there, but my identity as an individual um, is something much bigger than blood quantum. In order to know your identity, you must know where you come from. We also need to preserve our traditional ways of life. Don't let blood quantity identify you.